Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So last time I explained how, you know, you can prepare for the Brain Bee competition. So I thought you guys might want me to help you guys explain some of the things in Brain Bees. So Brain Facts, like the book that can help you prepare for Brain Bee competition so that you guys can be well prepared for the competition. So here we are with the first lesson. So for this channel we're going to talk about these kind of things about how to prepare for brain bee competition and maybe later on we're going to explain more sciencey stuff so if you like these kind of things please subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up if you find this video helpful and let's get right into it so brain bee so this in this lesson we're going to learn about the basic brain structure and functions so there's gonna be two main parts. The first part is basic information and the second part is brain structure. So brain information. So how do we see our brains? So our brain is quite mysterious and we haven't actually discovered all of the functions that are included in our brain, but we know some. So based on how we know, we know that brain divides into different parts but are also connected with each other. So they are connected with each other and they work together, but they're divided into different parts. And we're going to learn about this different parts in this lesson. And it's approximately 17 different parts. And after this lesson, you're gonna learn about their function and where they are located. And so, yeah. So here's just a picture of brain activity in, in, like, in, like, in mice, so mice brain activity. So here it is a uh, look from sideways. So you look at the brain sideways, this is what you see. So what brain looks like, the cerebrum, cerebral cortex, different lobes are the main things we're gonna talk about in just a sec. So just give you uh, uh, some background information. This here the, on the left, it's how you see the brain from up to down. And this is how you see the brain from aside. So here we are with the cerebral cortex. So what is cere cerebral cortex? Cerebral cortex is covering the outermost layer of cerebrum and they often refer as gray matters too because they, the color is gray. So these wrinkles appearance, so you can see they are, have like different wrinkles, allow for, so th these grooves allow for more inclusion of many more neurons. So they can have more neurons there. And these cerebral cortex, so we divide cerebral cortex into four different lobes. So first, the frontal lobe. Frontal lobe, it's very easy to uh, remember. It's just at the front of the brain, right here, the red part here. Frontal lobe, it's, the function is higher cognitive, cognitive skills. So this is the most advanced lobe out of all the lobes. And its um, function, for example, is for planning and thinking and et cetera. So moving on, we have the parietal lobe. So the parietal lobe usually process sensory information about attention and language. It's just behind the parietal lobe. It's just behind the frontal lobe here. So I recommend you to take some notes and write down these as you learn this so that you can review it at the end of the class or something. And it, it is really important for brain B to competition to understand where different lobes are located and where the what what are what they are for so like the functions next is occipital lobe so occipital lobe are for visuals you know you see things and they just go into the occipital lobe to process the information the visual information it recognizes shapes and colors so basically just visual stuff and lastly we have the temporal lobe it's for auditory information so as you hear stuff you you put this information to the temporal lobe and it processes it. So this is the brain facts official picture about what you need to know. As we see, we can see the frontal lobe, the parietal lobe, the occipital lobe, and temporal lobe. Another two things you have to know is sensory cortex and motor cortex. 
we're going to learn more about it in the future. But just to give you some idea about what they are, sensory cortex are this cortex that helps you to take in information, to so take in senses. So for example, uh, if you smell something, it goes to the sensory cortex. And motor cortex are usually for, you know, just to process uh, they come from the brain to the other parts of your brain, uh, other parts of your body. So they control, you know, your movements. So basically, sensory cortex takes in things, motor cortex put out stuff. Okay, so we're going to talk about specific things now. So the forebrain, so I said in the beginning of class that our brain are classified into forebrain, midbrain, hindbrain, and spinal cord. So as you can see, you can see forebrain, midbrain, hindbrain, and spinal cord. So first, we're talking about forebrain. Forebrain is the largest brain part in our brain. So forebrain consists of cerebrum, thalamus, hypothalamus, and amygdala hippocampus so these are all the things you have to remember so let's go from cerebrum cerebrum is the largest part of the human brain so it is associated with higher order functioning include the control of voluntary behavior so if for example if i want to move my arms it's controlled in the cerebrum um, so it's, it, it, it's divided into two hemispheres. So cerebrum have the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere. So bridging, so connecting these two hemisphere, it's something called corpus callosum. So these are just like bundles of fibers. So corpus callosum are bundles of, uh, are bundles of fibers and they connect the left and right hemisphere. Next, we have thalamus. So thalamus usually just relay and send out sensory information to the other parts of the brain. So for example, like if you smell something, if you see something, those are all sensory informations. Hypothalamus, hypothalamus, um, they usually control like internal um, organs and including regulating activities of autonomic nervous system, which is a nervous system that we're gonna talk about in just a sec and it's going to control the pituitary gland and regular sleep and appetite. Okay, next up we have amygdala. So amygdala, it's um, usually for emotions. So mainly remember that they are responsible for fear. So as you get terrified, it's because of amygdala. In hippocampus, it's related to short-term memories. So it's basically just memories. So that's our forebrain. Well, midbrain. Midbrain is just, you know, it's not that important, but it plays a critical role of like visual and auditory reflexes and sending these type of information to the thalamus. So, um, you know, and it's also important for reward mechanisms and moods. So you just have to remember midbrain is just sending out info, sensory information to the thalamus and it's important for mood. Well, next we have hindbrain. So hindbrain include the pons, cerebellum, and medulla oblongata. So these three are usually for basic functions. So for example, control respiration, heart rhythms, and blood glucose levels. And spinal cord is the really main part that our body sends information to brain and brings its information to our body. So basically connecting our brain to our body. Next, moving on to nervous system. So we're computing device. So nervous system, what is nervous system? It's computing device formed by white matters and gray matters. So as we talked about, gray matters are cerebral cortex and white matters are just things inside the brain that we're gonna talk later. So they are different types of nervous system. So the main two types are central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. We can call them as CNS and PNS for short. So CNS, it consists of forebrain, midbrain, hindbrain, and spinal cord. So these all make up our CNS. What make up our PNS? So it's basically just other parts of the brain and nerves throughout the body. So just, you know, nerves except the forebrain, midbrain, hindbrain, and spinal cord. So 
Next, we have nerve. Uh, so first, we let's explain about PNS. So CNS is pretty simple. It's just you know. Um, forebrain, midbrain, hybrid, and spinal cord, but PNS is a little bit more complicated. PNS consists of two different specific uh, nervous system. The first one is somatic nervous system. It's basically just neuron connecting the CNS with the parts of the body that interact with the outside world. So just remember, this kind of nervous system is responsible for interaction for our body with the outside world. And they, for, so for example, nervous system in the cervical region are for neck and arms, the recognate region are for chest and lumbar and sac sacral regions are for legs. So you don't have to remember these three regions just to know that what is somatic nervous system is to react, like it's to re like, you know, have the parts of the body to react with the outside world. Well, next on we have the auton autonomic nervous system. So, this is also uh, the second part, a second type of PNS. So it's this part is neurons connecting with the CNS with internal organs. So it's basically the inside. So the outside is somatic nervous system and inside is the autonomic nervous system. An autonomic nervous system divides into sympathetic nervous system and parasympathetic nervous system. So the sympathetic nervous system mobilizes the energy and resources during stress. So basically, we're going to talk this a lot about stress in the future. But to, so for short, it's basically just it helps it when you're under stress and it helps you to do good. Well, parasympathetic nervous system is conserving energy and resources during relaxed states. So for short, it's basically just for calming you down after you have been stressed and making sure that you maintain a metab maintain a, like you know good metabolism, um, you know, uh, and a good balance after you've experienced stress. So that's all we have for today's lesson. So in this lesson, we talked about the cerebral cortex, you know, the four different lobes, and the motor. Uh, so, and motor cortex, sensory cortex, and we talk about this other different parts of the brain and their function. And the lastly, we talk about nervous system. So, thank you for watching this video. I hope you find this video helpful. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like this video, and I will post more videos about this. So, if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell besides it so that you get notified every time when I post a brand new video. Thank you!